today we'll be showing you the installation of the all new Turner Motorsports CSL air intake box. Beyond an alpha end tune, there are a few extra parts you'll want to consider for seamless installation and performance of your S54. All parts links are in description. One thing to take note of is the dipstick and its mounting location. This is going to have to change with that big old CSL airbox. So, what most people do is they actually bend this dipstick and take it over to a location here to mount it. We don't recommend zip tying it like you might see elsewhere, so we're going to make a small bracket. Otherwise, you can purchase a separate CSL dipstick. However, that CSL dipstick is going to be different, in which case you'll have to remove half of your airbox to check your oil. We think the best option is to bend the old stock dipstick to a location that you can still use it. For reference, this is going to be replaced by the new CSL air shutoff valve. This one mounts in this location, while the new CSL will mount on top. For the sake of time, we're not going to show removing your stock air intake box. If you would like help with this, please refer to the videos linked in our description. Check out the differences between the new Turner CSL airbox versus the stock airbox. The intake bell itself is just impressive. So we're doing a little test fitting just to see what modifications we're going to need to make. First, we're going to need to trim this just a little bit so that it doesn't rub on when it's running. Right now it's not scratching it. The number one modification we have to make is with the dipstick. So we pulled it out just to see what room we have. So it seems we need to bend the tube so that it ends up coming through this gap and we'll mount it here in this area. So what we're going to do with this dipstick, this is its stock location. Notice it's over that hose and it's in a position that mounts to the air box. And so what we're going to do, we're going to take this dipstick and move it a bit over to the side. You still maintain clearance and we're going to take this bend out, straighten it, and then lean it over here. So we'll show you what that's going to look like. We just wanted to give you a roundabout plan. Use a 10 millimeter to loosen up the bolt on the bracket. There it is. Making just one bend at a time and then rechecking its position, we progressively modified the dipstick to be mounted in our desired position. So after making that bend, we see it travels well. We've got clearance on everything, here included. So now what we can do is take this bend and flatten it out to bring it down into this area here. Okay, with the bend so far, we have our straight edge on our mount to the box. We see that we have clearance here, but this is gonna end up hitting. So we need to bring it down a little bit more so that we have clearance. Start our bend where that green tape is and see where that leaves us. So test fit, we can see we're almost there. One more good bend here and our dipstick will come through the slot and our intake will have all the clearance it needs. Making our bend between those two arrows on the tape. To be clear, we're taking this and we're going up and over at about a 45 degree angle. Perfect. With that last bend, we see that we have clearance, the dipstick functions, now we just need to mount it securely. Once you have your dipstick properly modified so that it fits, the next step is to be mounting it. Before, there was a mount here that mounted to the air box. That's no longer there. So you need to create a new mount that retains its mounting position on the engine, or in our case, on this bracket. You don't really want to mount it to the body for longevity reasons. This is a solid dipstick, so it's best to mount it back on the engine or on the air box as it was before. So we're going to show you what we did. 
as you can see, we welded this bracket on this tab onto this and it retains its engine mount. We'll take this out for you. We have our dipstick securely mounted. If we look closely, we have a straight shot into its connection port. It's securely mounted with its bracket, so we know it's gonna have a secure seal. We come up and look. Our bracket that we made clears everything. It maintains its connection port so that this wire can be ran under this and connect, not being in the way. We have clearance all the way up. And this piece can be mounted to the air box on the tab supplied. So we're 100% good. Everything is secure. We can mount this air box. For this next section, you want to take your T25 Torx, unscrew these four bolts, and split the case. Now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer some parts. So we have two standoffs here. We're gonna take these off the old air box. With your two standoffs mounted, you can now take the supplied nuts in the kit and these will be used to mount the box to the bracket in the car. Next in your kit, you'll notice this bracket and two screws. What this bracket does is it acts as this tab and is to be mounted on your new box as so. However, this tab is used as a mount and if it's mounted flat, you won't be able to use it. So we're gonna make a little modification. And instead, we got two separate standoffs, just as those. And we're gonna use those in place of those screws. And then you have space for mounting. With the standoffs in place, the bracket can now be mounted. For reference, if you did buy the CSL dipstick, this is the mounting hole that that dipstick will be mounted. The next step is gonna be mounting your rubber intake boots to the air box. You'll notice you'll have two sets of clamps. Use the large clamps to mount the intake boots to the air box. You'll notice that the larger side of the intake boot goes onto the air box. Use the large clamps to secure your intake boots. You can go ahead and position the head anywhere you like in order to hide them. You'll never take these off. Properly hide the heads and still have access. What we're doing is these three will be facing this direction and these three will be facing that direction. And you'll start from the inside out. So you'll first tighten this one, and when, once this one's tight, come through here, and you can tighten that one up to hide it, and then this one. And you repeat the same thing on the other side. That way everything's hidden and looks good. For installing the throttle body side clamps, we've used our old box to take note of where the head of each clamp needs to end up in order not to bind with the throttle linkage. If you install these incorrectly, you might get stuck with wide open throttle, not good. So you'll notice on each cylinder, we've marked that this one needs to end up on the left side and that's where the head of the clamp will end up. And we've done that for each cylinder. So left on this one, left, right, right, left and left. And we'll show you how they end up. So what we've done is we've used this information from the old box and we've transferred it over so that we got the heads in the right position and we'll make minor modifications. So here's the game plan. First, we're gonna place the box in loosely. Then we're gonna go through here and we're gonna hook this line up to this port right here. And then starting with the rear, we're gonna push each rubber boot onto the throttle body. And then once that's hooked up, we can take this valve and hook it onto this tab. And then this line to this port. We'll anchor it down using these mounting points. 
on this bracket. As a side note, we have these oversized dine and throttle bodies. These are gonna flow a lot better with the CSL air box. Be sure and talk to your tuner about any modifications such as these so that you can get the maximum benefit from your CSL air box. The air box is in, we hooked up our line and we can see that it's hooked up by looking through and you can see the line poking through its slot. So we're good. Here's the rear, I'm gonna move forward. And they're all on perfectly. Okay, we're gonna show you the positions of our clamps. So this one, we got right over here, out of the way of everything. The next one, parts like these on the throttle system are what you have to watch out for. I'm not gonna touch anything. These ones are a little more difficult, but we can see that's not in the way of anything. We got clearance. And then the next one, we have clearance. And then over here, it gets difficult to see. But once again, clearance. And the last one, clearance. So double check that, tighten down, and you're good. With your boots on, you can now mount the air box. So you can see your standoff and your bracket here. So the nut's gonna go right here. And there's one a little further back that we cannot see. You mount your valve onto the tab that's mounted at the bottom of the air box. This hose mounts to the bottom of the air box, right there. If you're struggling to get that hose to pop on, what you can do is remove the power steering pump cap, and then reach in and pull the hose closer so that you can snap it on easily. We're gonna fit the bell. You'll notice a couple small holes on the bell and those correspond to two tabs right there and back there. And so what you need to do is get these holes around those tabs and then pop the top over. So now what you'll do, you'll feel under, and you'll feel that go in and you'll feel that tab in the hole. You should feel it's mounted nice and solid. Next, you'll want to install your CSL shutoff valve. First, you need to remove the stock one. So remember that plugged in the top of the air box. So we just need to remove it from the hose. Take the old one out, do what you want with it. And now the new one goes in its place. So that's connected. You can plug in there, this. Gonna go right in that slot to hold it. Like this plugs in on top of the box, and you're good. Now it's installed. All your intake air temperature sensor. So we're using a MAFLA system. So your IAT is gonna go here, and there's a key, and it pops right in. So squeeze the tab and push in. Notice it installs all the way flush, just like that. Lastly, we're going to install the IAT relocation wiring set. This is going to plug into your intake air temperature sender that we just installed. This will plug into where your MAF used to plug in. And because we're running a MAF delete, this one won't plug in at all. Temperature sender first. And we were going to route this. I'm just going to bring the wire here. Here, I'm gonna zip tie it here. We've taped this one off since we no longer need it. As we stated, this used to plug in your mass airflow sensor. Now there is no MAF, so we just plug directly in. Uh, 
belt hang here. We're gonna get this all tied down. This wiring, based on the fact it's kind of awkward, we're gonna run it out. Gonna zip tie it. Gonna take it under. Zip tie it here. We're gonna take this, tuck it, and zip tie it down in there. And run this wiring here. We zip tie this together and secure it to the wall, and we're good. Give you a recap of the way we routed things. We connected here, use a cable clamp to mount here, a zip tie, went through here, and plugged into our IAT. We have this plate, we modified it, we cut it down about a quarter inch so that we have clearance. So now nothing's going to get any belts, we're clear. Everything is ready to go. Install your strut tower brace. You might find that you need to install some washers in between so that you have clearance. Overall, this is a very well put together kit by Turner Motorsports. The only thing that was lacking for us was the crankcase to airbox ventilation. So we're gonna have to replace that with a CSL line or better yet, a oil catch can. The CSL airbox does not utilize the stock MAF. This being the case, you must convert your ECU to the Alpha N or to the CSL system. Coming up next on Fat Boy's Garage.